Hey folks, welcome back for another episode of Code Club. In recent episodes, I've been doing a fair bit of benchmarking of different ways of generating and then getting access to values within data structures. So far, we've been using what I've been calling a vector. And so actually, I need to step back a bit and clarify what I mean by a vector. A vector in R could be two possible things. First, it could be an atomic data structure, and it could also be a list. The atomic data structure could be a collection of values that are all um, linked together uh, and that are all the same type. So we generally think of this as a vector. This is what I've been calling things, right? So this would be where every value in the collection is say a number or a character or a logical or a date, right? And so you can see that every value in this structure has the same type. A list on the other hand is also a vector, but it doesn't require that every value in the structure be of the same type. And so you can have a list that's made up of all of those <laughs> different atomic types of vectors. And so you can have a list that is a vector of vectors effectively, but we don't call that a vector of vectors, we call that a list, okay? And so again, even though we might talk about vector, uh, realize that what R means by vector is really an atomic data structure Whereas a list is something uh, different, where again, you can have different values. In the previous episodes, we've been really talking about atomic vectors. And in today's episode, we're gonna talk about list vectors. <laughs> I know this gets a little bit confusing be between the kind of the technical definitions and then kind of how we colloquially use these terms. One of the reasons I'm interested in lists is because if you have a vector of vectors, that's not really a thing. <laughs> you can have a list of vectors, right? And so we previously saw having a two-dimensional array, which is really a vector, an atomic vector, again, um, where we have a number of rows and a number of columns. The problem with that, as I saw previously, is that we kind of, at least in my application, blew out the memory. And so we're trying to think of different ways of storing the data. And one idea would be to have a list for each kmer value or each um, value that is associated with each kmer. And then within each of those kmers, we might then have a vector indicating what genus each kmer is found in, right? So trying to build there eventually. And so again, one idea is to have a list of vectors, but before we can kind of decide upon that, I need to do some benchmarking here as well as perhaps try some other things in future episodes. Heading over here to our studio, I've got my benchmarking.r script as well as my benchmarking.cpp script. These are two scripts that I generated in the last few episodes for benchmarking uh, work with vectors for generating vectors as well as getting access to values from vectors. If you wanna get a copy of this code as well as all the code that I generate in today's episode, down below in the show notes, there's a link to a blog post for today's episode. There's also links to GitHub for the beginning and end state of um, this project uh, that you'll be watching today. And you can go to those links and kind of see how the code has changed over time. Again, I strongly, strongly encourage you to follow along on your own computer. And if you have questions, try them out as we go along. Experimentation is really the best way to learn. All right, so just to kind of refresh ourselves, um, I loaded uh, these four different libraries. Per is really part of the tidyverse, so I don't need to do that necessarily. Um, I'm also loading RCPP. And uh, we'll then have a variety of different functions to grow a vector using the C function. We saw that this was a pretty horrible way. We then saw that we can define it, but then get access to it by using the square braces instead of growing it with the C function. Go ahead and load that. We also saw um, that we could predefine it, right? So we could define a numeric vector for our output data and define the length of it and then update the values of it. This actually performed fairly well. Um, and then we also talked about the difference between single and double bracket, single and double. At least for this case with vectors, it returns the same output. Today we'll see a slight difference in that. One of the suggestions from Hadley Wickham in his book, Advanced R, was that to use double brackets when you expect to return a single value and single brackets when you expect to return multiple values. There is also using a colon to generate a vector as well as using the seek function. And then we saw that we could use sapply and lapply to iterate over values in a vector to then do, you know, what we're trying to do here, is which is basically to take the square of every value in our vector. And then we saw the map function from the per package using um, the magritter pipe as well as the, the base pipe 
to generate a vector, right? And so I'll go ahead and make sure all of these are loaded and then we'll test it for 10,000 uh, values. I'll also remind, remind myself that I have a C++ version of this that I'm calling vector RCPP. And so we can compile that with source CPP. And then I generated this function that um, is called MB by N. And I'll go ahead and run that with one E to the four entities. And so we see that this then outputs a ranked ordering or reversed ordering of the different functions and how long it took to run on a median. Again, the micro benchmark function repeats each function 100 times. I'm retrieving the median uh, number of nanoseconds that this is returning, right? And so we see that my C++ version is wicked fast um, and that growing it using the C function is horrible, right? All right, so that's good. Um, believe it or not, I came up with another way <laughs> of uh, generating a vector, and that is by appending. So we'll do. So I'll go ahead and add that function here. Uh, I'll do grow append. Uh, I'm going to add it, not because I think it's going to do great, but I'm curious to see how it compares in vector form versus list form. I'll go ahead and grab this code. Um, one of the differences between C and append. Uh, is that append allows you to insert something anywhere in the vector, right? So I'm appending the output vector by adding I squared to the end. I could also choose to add I squared after the third value, right? Um, and so that's a little bit of a different operation. Uh, so we'll go ahead and see if that changes the performance any. I suspect if anything, it might slow it down because it has that ability to insert it anywhere in the vector. So I'll go ahead and grab that. And again, to show you how we can update this micro benchmark uh, function. I'll go ahead and add that N there. Um, and it's wanting to kind of put everything over to the right. I'll go ahead and back tab this uh, to get everything. Oh, why are you being weird? Okay. <laughs> uh, and I'll go ahead and put this on the next line. And let's go ahead and load this function. And after that ran, we see that grow append actually is slower than grow with C as predicted. Uh, that is just truly a horrible way <laughs> to build a vector. So what you'll see now is that I have 13 different functions for building a vector. Uh, again, that it's, let's say all the values from one to N with those values then squared. Um, and we can see how they vary in performance. The output of these is a, a vector, a uh, atomic vector, right? One exception to that, however, is this vector L apply, which returns a list. And so I'm going to go ahead and rename this to be list L apply, and I'll then also add new um, functions to make uh, lists from all of these as well. So let's go ahead back to our code, and I will start uh, by grabbing that L apply and put that down here. And I'll then call this list L apply. And then let's uh, remove that final comma. And I'll come back up here. And we had vector L apply here. And we'll do list L apply. And again, I have that right below my vector S apply because those are um, pretty compatible, pretty similar to each other, right? Okay, so I am going to um, think about how we might modify these. I'm gonna go ahead and copy down this first one and do list grow append. And I'm going to predefine a list. So that's gonna be done using a vector with mode equals list. And so what this does, I'll show you down here in the console, vector mode equals a list, is that this then creates an empty list. If I were to go ahead and then add, let's say the number 10, then what I have is a list with 10 seats in it. And you'll see that the difference between this say and um, a numeric of 10 is that numeric of 10 gives you 10 values in an in atomic vector that are all zeros. Whereas with vector mode list 10, we get 10 seats in our vector, in our list vector that are all null values, okay? So it's a, a subtle but important difference, right? Um, and so that will do that. And I think we'll be in good shape with list grow append then. And then I'm gonna go through and do all these, which might be a pretty horrific idea, but eh, whatever, I trust myself to get this right. Uh, and then I'll do list grow C. Again, here we'll do vector mode equals list. Um, and so this should be good as well. And then we have vector grow BR. Um, again, this is growing it with the bracket notation. And so here again, we'll do um, 
vector uh, mode equals list. And I think that looks good. Uh, this doesn't be, shouldn't be vector grow, it should be list grow. And then we've got vector preallocation, single and double. I'm going to use the preallocate double bracket notation uh, going forward. So I'll go ahead and call this list. And again, vector mode equals a list. And we'll use the X there to define the size. And so that should be good. And then vector colon. Um, will want to make a list. Um, and so um, this is going to output a vector, right? So if I do one colon x um, to the second, oh, if we, <laughs> let's do five, right? Then we get those five values, it returns a vector. If I then say pass this to a list, so if I said like as.list, um, that will return it as a list. But if I instead give it as the argument to list, then we get a single seat with those five values within it. So it's a list of length one that has a vector with five units in it, right? So again, to remove the pipe to make it not so confusing, if I do list, say one colon five, that's going to give me a, a list with one element in it and a double, a numeric atomic vector with five values in it. If, however, I did as dot list, then I'm going to get a list with five seats in it, with each of those slots in the list, if you will, being an atomic vector of length one. Okay, this as dot list is basically what I want, <laughs> and so I'm going to then take my list colon and I'll pipe this to as dot list. Um, you know what? Maybe I'll not worry so much about the pipe and do as dot list on that. And again, um, it's not happy because. Ah, I don't have X defined. So let me try that again. There we go. That's good. And so then we can also do list seek. And so there's not a built in way to build a list like we're trying to do here, right? Um, and so that's again, because um, lists and atomic vectors are, you know, they're similar, but they're different. And so saying like seek one to 10 by ones or by twos or by threes is going to get you a numeric atomic vector, right? Uh, that doesn't really make a lot of sense for a list. So what we're doing here is a bit odd, but eh, we'll, we'll see how it rolls. And so we'll add our list seek here, and then we have our list L apply here. I'm gonna leave off the, the pipe-based operations for now. So I'll come down here, and I'm recalling that I also need to add a C++ version of this. And so I'll come back over to my micro benchmark CPP code, and I'm going to copy this um, from lines 5 down to 14. And this is going to be list RCPP. And the output that I want to return will be a list. Okay. And so list output X should give me a list that has length uh, 5 units long. I'm going to go ahead and uh, comment this out. And let's go ahead and, and return. Um, output size with a semicolon there. And I just want to confirm that we get things that are um, that, that make sense. So I'll go ahead and run that. That compiled it. So now if I do list RCPP on five, I should get five back. So I'm getting back a what appears to be a vector with five values in it. Um, it should be returning a single value. Um, and what I'm actually returning is a numeric vector. So maybe here for now, I need to make that an int and eventually we're going to want the output to be list as well. So let's go ahead and recompile and then we'll rerun it. And we see that sure enough, this generator, this constructor of my list will give us five seats. Okay. So I'll go ahead and remove that test code there. And I'm going to want to return this as a list. We'll save that. And so again, this will generate output to be a list. And then we'll add the square of i going through the loop. Again, we have this i minus 1 because our vectors start at position 1, um, whereas C++ and many other languages start at 0. And so because we've got this hybrid between R and C++, we need to make sure that we're going into the right index slot. So I'll go ahead and save that. And let's go ahead and compile. And then again, if I do list RCPP5, 
I get the right output, right, where I get that, uh, that list vector with five seats in it, and each of those seats is a vector with one element in it. Let's go ahead now and let's add our different functions to our micro benchmark. And so we can again do that by, I'm gonna remove that and I'm gonna copy in um, all these vector functions, right? And I'll replace them with list. And so I need to come back up here and uh, make uh, those also to be list functions. And I think what I'll do is add the pipe to do as.list, right? And then down here, we'll also have list base, all right? And then we'll pipe this into um, as.list. And let me double check that this works. Yep, that works well. And this one gives a vector as expected. I'm remembering also that uh, my vector map, I didn't make a list map. So let's go ahead and do that. Sorry if it feels like I'm going a little bit fast and all over the place here. Really what I wanna show is the comparison between these two different methods. And as we saw in the last episode, if we use map, this will also generate a list, whereas mass double we saw converts it into a atomic vector or numeric, right? Okay. So I will go ahead and reload all this. And then we should be able to reload our micro benchmark function here. And I'll remove that final comma so it doesn't yell at me. And we'll go ahead and load this. And then I should be able to do MB by N on N, which is 10 to the thousand. And it's complaining because it's saying that vector grow, append grow, uh, that vector map shows up twice. Ah, right, so I didn't change the name of the last thing. So list. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and uh, reload that function and then I'll go ahead and run it. Ah, so it's complaining now that it couldn't find function list prealloc SNG. Um, and that's because I didn't create one. <laughs> because when I did this with vectors, I got the same result using a single versus a double. Um, I will go ahead here and remove it also from the vector. Uh, again, some of these <laughs> oversights on my part of things not being named right or including things that weren't included, these are kind of the, the risks of copying and pasting and going way too fast. Uh, sorry for that. All right, so now we should be able to load it and then let's go ahead and run it. Hopefully it goes without any more errors. So that completed. It took a while to go, no doubt, because uh, this append approach took really long. Um, also, we've basically doubled the number of functions, obviously, by doing the, the vectors and the lists. I'm also looking at my code for the plot that we generated in the last episode, realizing this isn't going to work um, with our new output from this function because we've modified some things. I'm not gonna worry too much about it. Um, you can go back and maybe see about cleaning this up if you want. For now though, I want to be able to make a, 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 a easier way of looking at this data. And so what I will do first is I'm going to um, take this function call that we had and maybe I'll put it down here, some of the stuff I don't really need. I'm gonna call this results and I'll make it clear that N here is one E uh, to the four, right? And so I don't wanna wait to run it again. So at least for this iteration, I'll do results uh, is last value. And so last value will get you the last value that was generated, right? So if I look at results now, I see I've got that, right? And so I'm gonna go ahead and build a pipeline to make a new data frame where in one column, I'm gonna have the function name, another column, I'll have the median time for the vector version, and another column for the median time for the list version. So I'm gonna start by doing a mutate on my expr column. And to, with that, we'll do str replace, and we'll then uh, remove that parenthesis end at the end of each of these. And so we'll do back back open parentheses. Remember from the last episode, that matches an actual opening parentheses, and back back uh, close parentheses matches an actual close parenthesis. And I need to do this on the expr column and then I'll replace it with nothing. And so now what we get is clearly we've dropped out uh, that N, right? And so the next thing I wanna do is to separate my EXPR column into two columns, one for the data structure and one for the function. And so what we could do is separate, and the new function is called wider delim. Uh, it used to be separate, that's been deprecated in place of separate wider delim. 
And here, what we'll give it is the column, and that's going to be expr. And then we'll do names, and we'll give it a vector of names. So we'll say structure. And we'll also do f for the function name. Uh, if you give it the name function, then it's going to not be happy because function is a really important word in R, right? And then we need a delimiter, right? And so the delimiter, um, if you look at these, you might say underscore, but some of these names, function names, have two underscores, right? And so I think what I want to do is change that first underscore into a hyphen, and then I'll be able to use my hyphen as a delimiter. So why don't I, for now, uh, go ahead and add to this mutate expression on expr, and we'll do str replace, and we'll do xpr, and then I'm going to do underscore and replace it with a hyphen. And you might say, Pat, isn't that going to turn both of these underscores into hyphens? No. str replace replaces the first instance. str replace all replaces all of them. Let me show you. So now we see, right, with str replace, we've got a single hyphen. If I had done str replace all, then we would have replaced both underscores with a hyphen. I only want the first, okay? So that then gets us a hyphen between the structure and the function name. I'll go ahead and add that to the rest of this pipeline. And now we see we have four columns, right? The structure, the function, the median time, and the n. I don't want the n, so I'll go ahead and do select uh, minus n. That drops the n column. And then I'll go ahead and do pivot wider on with names from uh, structure. And then values from will be median time. And I see that um, I've got a little bit of funniness in some of the results with s apply and l apply. Uh, maybe I could rename that function to be um, apply. So list apply, vector apply, and those would kind of uh, show up together. Why don't we go ahead and for the sake of cleanliness, go ahead and fix that apply function name. And then we can run all this together as a single pipeline and make sure that the results all look good. I can go ahead and remove that results. All right, so we come back up here and I had list apply, maybe I'll call list x apply and vector x apply. And then we'll come up here to s apply here. I'll call this vector x apply, list x apply. I'll go ahead and reload those. And then we'll come back down and reload our function here. And then we'll go ahead and regenerate our uh, table. And we'll see if we can more easily compare what's going on here. So that completed. And um, we can see that things are sorted by the list, it appears. right? And so we can see for each of these that the list is quite a bit longer than the vector. right? So we could do something like um, dot last value, uh, mutate compare equals list divided by vector. So as expected, the list-based approach usually does much worse than the vector-based approach. I'm kind of surprised that RCPP does so much worse for a list versus for a vector. I'm a little bit worried that I'm misrepresenting the performance with a list, but then again, um, maybe not. If you have more experience with RCPP than me, please down below in the comments, let me know if there is something in my RCPP code for that list-based approach that isn't quite right. Um, and then we can kind of see that in general between like, I don't know, one and a half versus to 10 fold worse performance with a list compared to a vector. Um, the places where they're kind of more similar to each other is with the apply based functions and the map based functions. Again, these sets of functions basically do the same thing. They effectively generate a list and then convert that list to a vector, to an atomic vector. And if anything, uh, we see certainly for this X apply class that the list is faster than the vector. So anyway, that's, that's pretty cool. And again, I think this is happening because the vector based approach assumes that everything in the vector, uh, in the atomic vector has the same type, whereas a list allows to have different types within that uh, list vector. So the last thing that I wanna do is benchmark getting access to the values in a list relative to a vector. I think actually for all of these functions that I have for my getter functions, we could do the same thing with a vector versus a list. I'm going to go ahead and make a long vector and I'm gonna then also make a long list, right? That I will then feed into these functions. All right, 
And so uh, well, it's not happy because I need parenthesis on this as list, right? And so then what we could do is take our micro benchmark and before where I had long, I'm gonna put long vector and where I had short, I'm gonna use long list. And let's go ahead and run this micro benchmark and it's not happy because I forgot to load these functions. So we'll go ahead and do that here real quick. You guys need to remind me to do this. Ah. <laughs> anyway, what we now see is that the long list and the long vectors basically perform pretty similarly, although I am noticing that the long vector performs a smidge faster than the long list for nearly all of these cases, except for the case of, of getting one value out. And so that's that's interesting. And perhaps that has to do with returning a list versus returning a, um, a, a single element from a vector, right? Or, or a group of elements from a vector. One other thing that we should benchmark though, is that besides using numbers to get access to a list, we can also use names to get access to a list. And so I could have a list that I could say is like list A equals one to three, B equals um, three to six, right? And so now I've got a list that's got two seats in it, A and B, with vectors in it, right? And so I could, um, again, call this uh, my list, and I could do my list, and I could do A. Oh, I gotta put it in quotes though. To get back that vector, I could also do my list A, which returns a list with a single element A. So again, double brackets returns a single vector, single brackets returns a list, so a collection of values, right? Um, and then we could also do my list dollar sign A. And then we that's another way of basically doing the same thing as this double bracket notation. So to simulate that, I'm going to um, create some names, but I don't wanna generate 10,000 names manually because I don't have time for that. Anyway, so what I'll do is expand under, underscore grid and I'll do letters, letters. And so this is going to take all combinations of A through Z and match that with all combinations of letters A through Z, right? So we see in the first column, we have a bunch of A's, <laughs> um, 676 rows here. Um, and then for every, for A, A, we have all 26 letters and for B, all 26 letters and so forth, right? And so I'm trying to make a three character name um, that I can then add on to my long list. So I'll go ahead and add another letters. And so this then gives us 17,576 combinations of letters. I'll go ahead and pipe this to apply. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and do X equals underscore. And the margin is one. So apply will take a data frame like we have here and it will one will go across the rows and I will then do a paste zero, run that. Uh, this gets pretty messy. <laughs> and what I want instead is collapse equals quotes. And this then will generate for me my, um, what is it, it was like 17,000 different three letter uh, names. And so let me um, go ahead and name this as N, short for names. And I'll go ahead and put a line break here to keep things from scrolling off the right side of the screen. And then I'm going to take long list and I'm gonna call this long named list and assign that uh, long list. And then we can do names on long named list. And that's how we can assign the, the, a value to the names attribute of long named list. And here then I will give it the value N. Um, and it's not happy because I haven't loaded it. And it's unhappy also because the names attribute must be the same length as the vector, which is 10,000. And so N then needs to be the first 10,000 values or what I will do here then it will be length of long list and now we're good and if i do like long uh, named list and i use single brace right and do like one colon five i then see that i can get the first five elements of my long named list list right so now what i want to do is go about getting access to long named list based on the name right and so Again, what we'll do here is I'll go ahead and copy these values or these uh, function calls down. And so this will be a long named list. And there's four functions. I think that's right. 110C and index, 110C index, 110C index, good. So now 
I need to also then um, add a new function, <laughs> uh, which will be have named at the end of each of those function names, okay? So we'll come back up here and we'll go ahead and copy this down and we'll make a named version. So you'll recall from a few episodes ago that when we built these functions, to allow them to be on an equal footing where we're getting multiple values out of our vector or our list, um, that the generation of the vector actually took some time. And so I need to go ahead and create a vector of names. And so again, I have my n, which are all these names. And so I'm gonna do sample n 10 to get 10 values, 10 random values out of my names. Actually, maybe I should just to double check, uh, do n uh, one colon one e to the four, and we'll get these. It doesn't really matter what they are. Um, and so I will go ahead and plop in here those names. And then I need to separate these with commas. And then we're going to uh, pick one of these to return. So that will get uh, us good for vector get one named. And then again, we're gonna go ahead and get vector 10, but we're gonna create a named version. And then for our index, we're gonna give it our characters, all right? And then we're going to want to uh, basically regenerate this, but with these names. So I will go ahead and do that here real quick. All right, so that is our get 10 named. We also need to then get vector or vector get C uh, named. And again, we have all this. I'm gonna go ahead and copy the whole guts of this function uh, because then we're going to want to pull these together uh, into uh, a C function uh, so that we can effectively uh, pretend like we're returning a vector of these values. Very good. And now we wanna make a vector get index named where again, we will generate index and then we'll go ahead and put that in here and then this should be all good. I'll go ahead and load all of these functions because I suspect I forgot to do a couple of them. So we'll just run them all and load them. And then we'll come down um, to our micro benchmark and I think we should be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and make another table so it's easier to see things left to right. And we'll start by um, make, adding a delimiter here to replace an open parenthesis. We'll do mutate on expr equals str replace. And then we'll do that on expr. And that the pattern that we will match will be back back uh, parenthesis. And then I'm going to match the guts of that. Uh, and then back back parenthesis. And then we'll replace it with a space back back one. And so that then, sure enough, adds a space which we'll use as a delimiter. I'm gonna go ahead and also remove that initial vector. So I'll do expr, uh, str replace, expr. Uh, if I was slowing down and thinking about it, I could perhaps make a single regular expression to do what I wanna do here, but eh, I don't want to. So I'll do vector underscore and replace that with nothing. And so now we see that we've got that separated, we're good to go. And then we can again do separate, wider uh, delim, and then we'll do, we'll separate on the expr column, and we'll then do um, names that I will make function, I'll do f, and then I'll do data, and then our, our uh, delim will be a space. Very good, cool. Now we have our three columns. We'll go ahead and do pivot wider, and then I'll do names, from equals data, values from equals median time. Uh, so it doesn't like my um, my function names being uh, mangled here. Maybe what I could do would be to go ahead and remove the named from my F column, right? Here then would be to do mutate on F equals str replace on um, f with underscore named uh, and replace that with nothing. And so then that gets rid of those names, 
pipe that in. So now what we get are our four functions and our three data sets. And so giving it a vector versus giving it a list without names. Um, again, as we saw before, the vector performs a bit faster than a list. And that if we name the list, it takes a lot longer than a basic vanilla list. And again, this is one of the reasons, if you've been watching past episodes, where I converted those k-mers. So we had eight character letters, so A, T, G, and C, repeated for eight um, nucleotides, right? So those eight mers, that I converted those into an index, into an int value, an integer value, so that we can get this performance from going from a named list <laughs> to a vector, or perhaps if we have to, a, a long list, right? Um, and so hopefully, again, this shows you a little bit about, again, the differences between using a atomic vector versus a list vector. And again, trying to get this jargon straight in our heads. As you can see, I, I struggle with it myself. I generally call it anything where everything in the structure is the same type, a vector, and everything else is a list. Um, hopefully Hadley Wickham wouldn't get too mad at me for goofing up on that. I think a lot of people do that, and I'll probably not change. But again, it's important to keep in mind the difference between an atomic vector and a list vector. They're both vectors uh, with, with subtle differences. Ultimately, I think we're going to need to make use of lists because we're going to want to have a list of vectors, uh, of atomic vectors, right? So again, I hope you found this benchmarking analysis interesting and you're starting to feel a little bit more emboldened to do your own benchmarking where you want to do some experiments to see if one approach might be faster than another. Again, for 99% of cases, the differences in performance here will not matter to you, right? If you're doing data analysis for a paper you're writing, you probably don't care if things take a couple extra nanoseconds, right? But if you're looping things and doing things, say, a hundred or a thousand times, like we're going to do to get um, a, a confidence score, or if you're putting this into an R package like we are to give out to the world to use, then that time savings uh, for the user might be worth extra time that me, the developer, has to spend to make my code uh, a bit more performant, okay? So I have one more idea for how we could benchmark representing our KMER data, and that's gonna be using a data frame. So in the next episode, I will share with you, again, some strategies for building and then getting access to values from a data frame and see how that compares to what we've been doing here with atomic vectors and list vectors and hold on for it, but a data frame is another type of list. <laughs> All right, so that you don't miss that episode, please be sure that you've subscribed to the channel and you've been following along, and we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.